Hello. Today, um, I was gonna spend my entire day just playing video games. This Steam Deck has had me in a chokehold. I've been playing a lot of old PlayStation 2 games. Does anybody remember Xenosaga? Does anybody remember this? It's one of those RPGs that's super philosophical. So back in the day when I was in, I was in middle school. I didn't understand shit. I would skip every goddamn cutscene. So now I'm trying to go back as an adult. I still don't understand what's going on. But today I'm gonna be going for a glowy look because I'm probably just gonna stay home and this is not a look that I can wear outside because in Korea we still have to wear masks kind of like indoors. I wash my face and I put a mist on but for skincare this line I use I bought it never use it but I use it because of a trying vegan k-beauty shit video and this shit has had me in a chokehold. Pretty much every beauty video I did while I was in Texas I pretty much just used this because it's pretty much all I had. It's made my skin so much better. The Begins line from Chong Semur. It's like her kind of new skincare line. They also made a new hair care line, which they use in their shop. They have a really famous shop in, uh, what is it? Chongdam, Chongdam? I think I got my hair and makeup done there once. I filmed a video, but we were, it was so early. It was the day that I did a live show with Coco and Lim from the Wonder Girls. Chong Semur's like people, they offered me like to film a video there while I was getting my shit done. Filmed it, but it was so early in the morning. We were like, so like we were out so out of it. So I actually never ended up uploading the video, which I feel so bad about because literally Rain's wife, her makeup artist did my makeup and she's like legendary to me. And like, she's like one of my favorite makeup artists and just like people in general. So it's so sad to me that I never uploaded that video because there's just like no talking. It came off more awkward than anything because I was just sitting there like, because I was just starstruck. There's three serums in this line. There's the green calming one, which is this one I probably use the most. There's a pore perfecting serum, which is for enlarged pores and I guess more oily skin, which I have been using a lot lately in the summer during the day. Um, and there's a Vita clearing one, which I think is for acne, but um, I don't really have acne anymore. So I don't really find myself using that. I'm gonna use the pore perfecting one. I just like that this doesn't mattify my skin. It helps with pores, but it doesn't like dry your skin out. As I'm getting older, my skin is just getting more and more dry. I think I really think it's the Filipino genes. Like the Philippines is such a humid country. I think Filipino skin is made to be in that kind of uh, environment. And I notice a lot of Filipinos that I've met, if they're not in a very humid area, their skin just looks extra dry, I've noticed just a little bit so that it absorbs really quickly. And then I like this line so much, I bought two more of the toners because I ran out of that. And I bought another one of these creams, which this bottle I'm still working on, but it's almost gone. I don't know what they put in this shit. It's all vegan, but the way it makes my skin exactly how I like it for not just before makeup, but how I want the feeling of my skin in general, like the kind of jonjonan texture. I don't know how to describe jonjonan in English. I use that word all the time to just when I'm doing these videos, but it's a kind of like creamy, kind of like really bouncy kind of skin that feels well moisturized, but it doesn't feel like oily and like you use like Vaseline or something or like a tub of Aquaphor. Oh, and also I colored my hair. I was cool tone, but I, I broke the rules and I went with like a burgundy, which is burgundy technically has a little bit of purple in it, which is one of my favorite colors. I just really hated that ugly green gray that my hair was turning into after I bleached it. So I went to my stylist, Mr. Mr. Nami, and I was like, I'm gonna go burgundy today. And he's like, okay. And he did it. And he was like, wow, I don't think I've ever seen you in this hair color. And in general, most people don't really do this hair color. Literally the only people that do this hair color these days in Korea are Ajumas. If you've been to Korea, you know what I'm talking about. Freshly permed Ajuma hair. Freshly colored burgundy where you can still see the, the scalp is red from the dye. Oof. It's all absorbed to the skin. There's not no there's nothing sitting on top. It's pretty much gone, but the skin is left like this. And that's what you want. I see a lot of beauty videos where like they'll have like a mist. They're like, oh, look at the glow that this mist gives you. They'll spray their face. And while the mist is literally still sitting on the skin, do you see that glow? I'm like, yeah, I see it because you're still looking wet. As you guys know, I, or if you don't know, I film a lot of videos at Style Korean. They sell a bunch of K-beauty stuff at, at a really great price. Their shit is much cheaper than a lot of other places. It's a beauty company so i was like why don't you guys just send me like a bunch of like again i was trying to do a lot of like vegan k beauty content so i was like just send me a bunch of like vegan shit but i'm mostly i feel like i'm mostly a makeup channel but they keep sending me skincare and they send me so many goddamn sunscreens i'm like i'm never gonna use all of this and also for me i'm the type that if i find skincare that i like i need to stick with it because when i notice when i start veering off too much my skin gets really up like I, oh my god i used this thing uh when i got back from texas and my skin was 
up so badly. My skin got scaly. It almost looked like I had, what is that word? When your skin is super fucking dry. It looked like I had skin atrophy. It was so bad. So I literally just stuck to this stuff afterwards and also this other thing from this. This is like my go-to for when my skin is really f***ed up and my skin barrier is compromised. Estra, this line in general, the lotion. I only had the lotion, so I was only using this, but there is a cream that I would normally use. Gray stuff, very basic, but really great for if your skin is like f***ed up and you need it to recover. So that one shit that I tried. I'm, pretty, I'm sure it works for someone else, but for my skin type, it was not working. So they keep sending me all these goddamn sunscreens. And so I got these from Tokobo, which every time I see this shit, I always think it says tobacco. But they've been really pushing this stuff because all the beauty YouTubers are getting sponsored to talk about this. They keep sending it to Style Korean. It started with this one. I don't, I'm, I really don't like sun sticks, to be honest. I, we talk about sun sticks like they're great on the Style Korean channel, but I hate these because I just find it too drying on my skin. And you know, as a makeup wearer, to be honest, if I'm going to complete honest, I'm not so anal about UV protection. For me, I'm indoors like 99% of the time and I feel like I do need a little bit of vitamin D every now and then. So I'll put a light layer of sunscreen in the morning if I'm going to go out, but I'm not so anal about it. I know that's like taboo and like, oh, you're going to get wrinkles. Actually, no, I think it's more, more about getting skin cancer. That's understandable, but I don't know. They came out with a new liquid version, the biohyaluronic acid vigna radiata seed extract. I want to say that this is vegan. I have no idea. It's rather chok chok -e. very moisturizing, woot woot, which I think is like a basic thing that sunscreen should be these days. I will say though that those uh, sun stick sunscreens are really great for like on the neck where you don't want to put like, I don't know, the idea of putting like lotion all over my neck in the back of my neck is so nasty to me. Things like that, or I feel like you do sports, like my little brother does sports, so things like that would be really convenient for him because you just like swipe that shit on. And I have one of those UV cameras that tests to see if it, you get really good coverage with uh, UV, like the uh, sunscreens and just one swipe, you get really good coverage. So they, they work. I just don't really, I'm not a fan of the texture. Now I want to glow, but I don't want to glow too much. And that, I don't know. I find that the, this sunscreen kind of makes me feel a little bit oily. So I'm just going to take a tissue and blot. So I still feel super moisturized and junjone, but I don't have that like film on the skin that you can get sometimes when you layer too much skincare. I got this Bobbi Brown Intensive Serum Foundation. I got this from Si or Liu Makeup. Never really used it because I was like, uh, I have to wear masks. Like I don't want to wear like glowy foundation. But I saw Song Gang. He's uh, the model for Bobbi Brown. And I was like, oh my God, I suddenly am interested in trying it. <laughs> I did try their old serum foundation. I think that this replaced that one. Um, I'm going to use it with a flat foundation brush because flat foundation brushes are much better at retaining glow. Okay, that looks nice. Um, not as high coverage as I thought. Could have sworn I remember the original serum ones, even though it was super glowy and hydrating. It still had really great coverage. It's probably because of the brush that I'm using, but um, it's okay. I'd rather build it up and or use concealer instead of putting a thick layer of like really heavy moisturizing foundation. This sponge, this is not like a regular sponge. That's one of those coating sponges. Usually sponges have like this kind of porous texture, but this one has two coating sides. This is the type of sponge you would want to use if you want to maintain the coverage while you're blending, but also it retains uh, any glow if there is. In a way, it's kind of, remember back in the day on Beauty YouTube when people were trying silicone sponges, like the sponges that wouldn't absorb any of your product, but they were terrible at blending. It's almost like that, but to some degree, it still kind of absorbs a little bit of product. As always, you want to keep most of the product on this part of your cheek because that's usually the fattiest part of your cheek. The star zone of the face is where you have most like the thinner part of the skin and like fine lines and things like that. So you want as little product as there as possible, especially for like these moisturizing foundations because they are the types of bitches that will sit in those fine lines and mock you. Nothing feels worse than going home after meeting and hanging out with friends or other people. You notice you're cracking all over the place. You've got dry patches or you've got creasing foundation and you're like, nobody told me. I say that now though, but whenever I'm in that situation where there's like, say my friend is talking and I notice there's food in their mouth, I never know how to tell them without also embarrassing them. Not that they're guaranteed to be embarrassed, but I don't want to like bring it up because I just feel really bad. So I don't know, like always awkward in situations like that. I never know how to approach it. And now I'm going to use these two concealers just to cover anything extra like my beard or my cheeks where I have some kind of like dark spots and stuff. It's pretty much all I use. Um, because it's almost, in a way, almost like a clean girl look, I'm not gonna go too 
hardcore on my dark circles because I honestly almost feel like sometimes you need a little bit of that darkness under the eye to kind of complete the kind of like natural coloring you have around your eye because if you cover them completely it's almost like you look too white under the eyes. I hate the look of when people are like oh I'm just gonna wear concealer and chapstick so they put concealer just under their eyes but it's like white under the eyes or it's like this like redness on the cheeks so that it still looks like really strange to me. I don't know. Yesterday I met up with uh, Eddie and he was spilling the tea to me about some celebrity dating gossip. This is information from like industry insiders that like know everybody on the inside. And it's just like, sis, I wonder what it's really fucking like to be in that circle of dating. Like so famous that it's almost dangerous to like be dating normal people. So for basically your possible pool of potential partners, it's all just like A-list celebrities. It's just, oh my God, I could never. Okay, we are looking good that glow which i cannot wear outside i probably could if i just didn't go to like anywhere inside i just think it's really funny that in korea like when you're outside you don't have to wear masks but when you walk into like a cafe you have to have your mask on but when you sit down you take your mask off you basically just wear your mask for like 20 seconds let's do brows espar collab with this one youtuber to make this stuff so i'm gonna use that because the brows are worth today for like those kind of like lifted brows um i have to fill my brows in first though before i use the brow pomade I like that this pencil's super skinny, so you can actually just draw the front hairs. I've also seen a few YouTubers talk, having this conversation about how like short form media is like really fucking up like a lot of content creators, like people that were originally like on YouTube, but now that everything is trying to turn into TikTok, it's like everyone is like trying to move over to that sort of platform, that kind of content. But for me, I'm kind of just chilling on YouTube because I feel like if I try to do TikTok now, it's one, it's too late, and two, I don't know. I just feel like even for me, I watch YouTube myself. So I feel like with these longer form videos, I can uh, parasocial relationships with that whole conversation about that, right? I just feel like I can, I can see YouTubers' personalities a little bit better and I just feel like I can relate to them more. And I just, I'm more interested in that. When it's like TikTok, it's like fun. Like, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of like, I myself consume a lot of like YouTube shorts and it's fun, but it's like, I don't really care for the people that I see. Like I'll follow people maybe because they're cute or something, but other than that, I don't feel like kind of creates long lasting like connections, I suppose, which can sound kind of toxic, but I just find YouTubers more human, if that makes sense. Not that TikTokers are human because they're human, but I don't know. I just find the connection to be there on a YouTube channel than like on a TikTok account. And, um, people can get millions of followers within like a short amount of time on TikTok, but I really feel like the follower count doesn't really matter at this point. I think it's more about the views, but even then it's probably just people just randomly coming across the For You page and seeing that content. But even for me, I feel like I followed a few people, but I would never see their content on TikTok. It would just be like random people that I don't even know. So with that kind of algorithm, it's just like hard to find anyone and follow them seriously. I put my eye primer on. So while that's drying, I'm gonna use a bit of contour. I, I bought this because of Pony. I don't really use it, but I feel like for this look, because everything's going to be cream or uh, liquid or whatever, um, I think it would make sense. Again, I don't really want to trash talk TikTok too much because there is some really great content on there. I, it's popular for a reason, right? Oh my God, I'm a dumb bitch. I literally forgot to use the brow pomade. I like this one way more than the Anastasia one. So if you can find this, get this one. If you're the type of person to use these sort of brow pomades. I do use the Anastasia brush though. <laughs> And this is vegan, so woot woot. And I find that it's a little bit easier to wash off than other brow pomade type products. I also did do a brow perm on myself, so um, it does stay up a little bit better than up normally, but I use this Entropy Brow Kit. It's like a two-step sort of thing. One is the perm and one is the neutralizer, so it's basically, basically an at-home brow perm thing, and it's really, really easy because you just brush it through your brows and shit. Do be careful, though, because if your skin is sensitive, you might get a little bit of redness around the eyebrow area, and it might start peeling a little bit the next few days. But uh, my skin's fine now. Now I'm gonna do my eyes. It's not gonna be complicated. Uh, not that any of my eye looks are complicated, uh, but I wanted to kind of match the face. Like, I don't think it would make sense for my whole face to be glowy and then my eyes to be like matte. So I am gonna use like these satin shades. I don't think these are available anymore. Even at the time that they were available, I feel like I had a hard time looking them up on the internet. It's just a really pretty glowy bronze, I guess. I know they have like cream shadows and stuff, but I don't know. I don't have any cream shadows that are the colors that I would want to use. 
after like has been stuck in my head. And also, girl, the 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 age really jumped out when when that shit came out and they used the sample of "I Will Survive" and I was I immediately recognized it. I was like, oh shit! But then everyone was like, what is this song? I feel like I heard it, but I, I'm like, oh. I'm just hoping it's just because they probably forgot. But also, I just feel like all the youngins didn't know what the song was, so I was like, I'm so old. And I am gonna put some mascara on. I love this Floresis one because it's just so natural. It's black, but does it really more than just like black? It doesn't really thicken my lashes. It kind of just makes them more obvious. So I like that it uh, has that kind of like effect. Or instead of this mascara, there is this lash serum that I've been using. I believe this is available in South Korea and they are the ones that gave it to me. And I saw it all of them, so it's like current. Uh, but it's this lash serum. The applicator looks like this and it doesn't sting my eyes like some other eyelash serums can. So it's really great. I put it on my lashes and my lash line, but I noticed if you put quite a bit of it on the lashes, it almost gives you a very natural mascara effect because in a way the serum almost dries on your eyelashes in a way. Not too, it doesn't feel like a, like a mascara, but um, I noticed that it does give me a little bit of definition. 3CE came out with, they, they come out with so many new products, but I feel like nobody talks about them anymore, which is so sad because it's almost like their products got a little bit better, but the heyday of 3CE and how they were, had a chokehold on everyone in the K-beauty community, it's not there anymore. Or they're probably talking about stuff I, I just don't realize. But uh, they came out with these blushes, these liquid blushes. There's matte ones and there's hydrating liquid ones. This their sheer liquid blush. This is in the color Soft Fig. I wanted to go with a warm look today, but I don't want to look too orangey. 3C, they come with a bunch of cool tone stuff, but for a while, their idea of cool tone was still kind of warm, more neutral, I suppose. They Recently, they came out with really, really cool tone stuff, so that's great. But uh, this is still kind of in line with having a little bit of like a warm undertone to it, I suppose. I almost feel like the eyes are looking too heavy now. Mm. I like the color of the eyes, but now I feel like it's too eye focused. I really wanted this to just be about the skin. The blush I'm just putting on the top of my cheekbones is I want it to be kind of like a healthy look. I really don't like the eyes. Let's do the lips first and then I'll decide after that. I'm gonna be going for like a, a really glossy nude lip today, but um, it's really important that I conceal my lips. Otherwise the tint, which is a really kind of light nude, will mix with my lip color and it won't come off as like nude. It's really important though that when you're concealing your lips to do this, you don't use a color too light because it will just make your lips look ashy and the gray will come through. So, And then a little bit of powder that doesn't move around. Now I had to conceal my lips, but I don't want them to like completely disappear. So I'm going to use this lip uh, liner just to get a little bit of definition on the top lip. And even on my lip line, because my lip line is whack. One of my favorite beauty YouTubers, Sobong, she collaborated with Vanillaco. It came out with this line of tints, these really glowy tints. Uh, they're in five shades, and uh, I'm using the shade Nudie Near. They're all really, really pretty colors, and they're all kind of like mute in tone, so they're not like too... Um, I noticed my face is very sensitive to like saturation. So if, if the color is too bright and saturated, it like really pops out. So I really need to use colors with kind of almost like gray in them. And I used to hate on makeup that had a lot of gray in it. But if I want to go for like a natural look, that's pretty much what I need to use. Natural for me anyway. Yeah, I don't like the eyes with this. The texture of this tint is actually a little bit on the thicker side, which is nice because I feel like it lasts much longer than like really thin tints that are supposedly moisturizing, but you kind of like apply it and you let it sit there for a little bit and then it will create this like film on your lips and that will give you like a pretty glow. I'm taking these, these eyes off. I hate it. I hate it. I am going to leave a little bit of the eyeshadow that I applied like beneath. I just feel like I put too much on the top lid. Now, this is a glowy look and we use a bunch of glowy products. But now it's really time for the piece de resistance of this look, which is the product I really wanted to use for this video. Uh, but it's Lisa Eldridge's brand. Uh, it's her Elevated Glow in the new shade Pink Moon. The original like kind of light shade that they came out with was more of like a yellowy neutral. But they came out with this more pinky one, which I really wanted to try. So if you want to retain glow, you need to use brushes that are more flat. So. For my face, I kind of have to keep it glow just right here on the very top because if I start going like here, it looks so unnatural and I just look kind of oily. Oh shit, that's kind of erasing my blush. Also trying to avoid my immediate under eye area because again, old man, I have wrinkles. And what I like about this highlighter is that there's no like obvious glitters that give you that fake glow. It really just looks like a natural glow from, from within. 
Nice, nice. I can't be glowing everywhere though because I'll just look oily. So I'm gonna use a little bit of powder here. I really like doing makeup videos on myself, like these simple get ready with me's. But if you try to think about like when is the best time to upload, you because usually I upload at the same time, like basically when people get off work or school. But I noticed that I, for me personally, I like watching stuff in the morning when I'm getting ready. If I'm if I'm going somewhere early in the morning, I like to watch stuff in the morning. So I find I mean, like things like this would make sense because it's like a get ready with me, right? So I get ready with me in the morning. So while you're eating your breakfast or whatever, you can just have me playing on the side. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Also, I still want to bit more glow on the lips. So I'm using this Anastasia lip gloss with a brush. Ooh. I do like the Ariana Grande, the REM Beauty lip gloss so much more, but I left it in America. I don't know why. That's it. That's it. Random, but uh, benefit of only applying lip gloss on the center of the lips is that when you're drinking through a straw, if you kind of just drink from the side, you get less like product on the straw. Anyway, I'm gonna do my hair. Let's go for a wet look. What the fuck? Girl, this shit is not working. Oh god. So if we're gonna do a wet look, you kind of have to have your hair kind of damp. And we're gonna use gel. If you guys know that one YouTuber, actually I don't want to say YouTuber, he does YouTube, but he's a hairstylist, a Q Sam, very famous channel on YouTube in Korea. But he has his own brand called Anaze. I would use their gray shampoo all the fucking time because it's like the best hair color shampoo because it really maintains a really beautiful gray color but they actually have a gel called the the gray gel it's basically just uh if you want that kind of wet look i guess mind you this is probably like what my second time doing wet hair so i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> but the idea is that you put the gel in your wet hair and when the gel dries it will maintain the wet look but your hair is like keeps its hold it's really important that you kind of like go into the hair i see some guys when they style their hair they only put product like on the top like this but that really just coats the top of your hair you kind of have to go in if you don't go in your hair falls much faster same with hairspray um long hair or short hair uh, if you want to maintain the hairstyle, it's really important to go into the hair. If you just spray the outside, then you're only maintaining the outside and the inside will fall apart. It's kind of like maintaining the foundation of the hair. Now I'm going to take a blow dry, but with this attachment, this is originally for, I guess, like curly, wavy hair, but it's great for setting hairstyles because it helps the gel dry, but it doesn't push air out and like move your hair all over the place. It kind of just creates just a dome of hot air. This is so important. When you want that kind of like this thing, put the heat here and use your fingers to kind of... Even if you're not using this attachment, if you're just using your regular hair dryer, that's so important to give you this, this thing, this anime thing. <laughs> I see some people try to like use a flat iron to make this kind of wave thing, but that doesn't work. You need to push the roots upwards. Also, if you're like me where your forehead like is flat and like goes backwards, like, I look like a caveman. Using this method, like even if I'm not doing this hairstyle, if I'm just having like my hair down after I shower and I'm blow drying my hair, I hold my bangs like this, blow dry them with hot air and then cool them so that the roots push up and outward so that I get more volume here. If you have these bits here like this that like stick out, um, I probably should have put more water here, but uh, you can use your blow dryer to flatten that. Oh my God, not me being a hair content creator. And I just like when pieces like fall in front of the like very like light pieces. I don't have baby hair, so this is what I have to work with. My face is slightly on the longer side, so I don't want too much volume like right here. I know if your face is on the shorter side, you can create a more pre like more balanced face by adding more volume on this area specifically. Uh, but for me, it doesn't. For me, it doesn't look as cute. So the volume should mostly be right here. That's my look. That's my glowy look for end of summer, even though my entire summer was spent indoors. It's still a little bit warm in Korea, but it's starting to get cool. So, um, and I never, I bought this shirt for the summer, but I only wore it just now. It's like this really thin silk kind of material. So I'm not going to wear it anywhere except for maybe this video. In fact, I don't even really like it. Okay, this glow on my forehead is not giving, so... I used to say giving ironically, like what does that even mean? But I do this all the goddamn time with the slang that the youth are using at the time. I use it ironically, I end up like literally using it like super seriously. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.